okay, okay, okay. We got us a second channel vid. This is how Master Ugwe became the most hated YouTube YouTuber. I don't know why I said it like that. But yeah, let's watch. Let's watch, let's watch. Mike Tyson once said, social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. Facts. All right, we can continue. Lots of people like to test what wild stuff they're able to say online before it gets way too far. No one has really pushed this quite like Master Ugwe. Ugwe is a humongous creator with a face recognized all over social media, but specifically on YouTube. There's a 99% chance that you've seen one of his many, many shorts, even if you don't remember it. He always had a diehard fan base, but recently has become one of the most hated creators in the community. How did someone with so many subscribers get so hated so fast let's cut the bullshit and get right into it now master ugwe whose real name is omer sastim started his journey where most people start their content journey on tiktok he okay. discovered that he could do a very good impression of the character master ugwe from the movie kung fu panda and to give him credit it's pretty spot on now the character was known to drop absolute gems of wisdom to all of the other characters in the movie and stuff that you could actually apply in real life and omer would use this voice to give joking pieces of advice. Okay. If she cheated on another man, her coochie is as big as Sudan. And these quotes of wisdom were usually okay. just funny jokes about getting girls or kissing the homies. Ugwe never really intended to go viral with these videos. He kind of just made them for fun with his friends. But he liked the views that he was getting a lot. And it made him crave more. Soon he started posting more of these types of videos to keep the momentum going. And pretty quickly, he gained a sizable audience on TikTok with over a million followers. God, along with a pretty strong fan base. Whenever he posted these quote type of videos, they were usually met with comments like, yes, master. But the problem with this type of content is that it can only get milked for so, so long. long. Exactly. The shit will get dry quick. You know what I'm saying? If you keep doing like niggas, you're not going to watch the same video that many times to be like, all right, this shit is still funny. You know what I'm saying? We niggas know the joke. Think of a new joke. You know what I mean? Before it gets pretty dull. Usually the bit gets tiresome and people move on. So Ugwe started to try different forms of content to expand on the brand. He started creating multiple different TikTok accounts so he can try different styles of videos. He tried stuff like following trends, using audios, and even telling some of his own jokes. This way he could show off his own humor and originality and try and be versatile. And these jokes were not exactly family friendly. He would tell the edgiest stuff that he could get away with deeming it as dark humor. What do you call an autistic kid with a gun? Special forces. And a lot of these jokes were race jokes. What do you call a Chinese kid who was born too early? Wong Tai Ming. Obviously with almost any dark humor jokes there will always be the types of people that don't find it funny. Okay. And noticeably a lot of the jokes he made were targeted at black people. Just don't need your assistance. And since Ugwe himself was not black, people found this in pretty bad taste. That was until he befriended another creator who co-signed these jokes and basically gave him the pass, Man Like Isaac. He himself he also did. built a pretty big reputation for making <laughs> dark humor jokes. See, here's the difference between someone making consistent dark humor jokes about a certain race and the niggas being the race making the jokes. That nigga? Yeah. So... Like, you're black, so making, being a black person and making jokes about black people, it's like, you're a part, you understand. But, like, there's only so many black jokes you can make where you're put. you know what I'm saying? Like, now, there's a, uh, there's a dude, there's this white dude that makes black jokes, but they're harmless black jokes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he did a, he did a joke where it was, like, white people reading, Right? And it was just a white person reading. And then he did black people read, reading, right? And then it was a black person reading, but in the background, the fire alarm alarm thing went off. You know what I'm saying? He makes harmless jokes like that, so this shit's funny. You know what I mean? This shit's funny. But, like, when you make that your whole gig and then you're not black, and it's not even, like, kind-hearted jokes you're like dead ass trying to like hunger games and like like 
Come on, that's kind of, you know. Specifically, black jokes. So it only made sense that the two of them would work together. It was like peanut butter and jelly. Ugwe could make all of the black jokes he wanted and he can get away with it with Isaac being in the video. This respectfully helped both of them grow. Granted, most of the people who watched this stuff were just edgy middle schoolers, but views are views. Yet, it still wasn't enough for Ugwe. He usually pushed these jokes so that he could get more and more views. However, TikTok guidelines are pretty strict. It's not easy to make offensive jokes on TikTok because most of the time they will actually get removed since they always usually reach the wrong audience. Ugwe's videos constantly got removed all the time for hate speech. But did this stop him? Of course not. He kept posting dark counts, humor yeah. because it's what built his audience in the first place. However, eventually he poked the bear too hard and his account with 2.7 million followers was permanently banned from TikTok. Damn. But again, this did not stop him. After all, Ugwe created multiple accounts and was posting on all of them, getting millions of followers from each of them. If if an Damn. account got banned, he would just create a new one. But TikTok still wasn't really doing it enough for Ugwe. He needed more. Ugwe's goal was to maximize views while putting in as minimal effort as possible. And that's when a light bulb appeared over his head. Ugwe saw accounts that were getting hundreds of millions of views just by posting other people's videos. It was so simple, yet so effective. So he thought to himself, what if he was able to also repost these videos and get the views while adding his own brand and likeness to it? Ugwe saw the opportunity and found the perfect place to implement his strategy YouTube. Now at the time, the trend of making the Chad face was very hot. You know, when people would make that giga Chad face when someone does something super alpha. Ugwe created a new format where he would react to viral videos inserting the Chad face and basically spam post those like crazy. And just like how he did on TikTok, he created multiple YouTube channels where he would be able to post these videos non-stop. He's had all of these channels for nearly three years and some of them for barely even a year, yet he's gone over 20 billion views across Insane. all of them. On average, that's around 18 million views a day at least. Insane. So this was working way better than TikTok. Yet, it still wasn't enough for Ugwe. The shorts you know were doing so crazy, crazy views, but it wasn't... You know what's so crazy? All of this is because the nigga got greedy. Something was working for you multiple times, and it just wasn't enough, and you kept trying to push the limit, and now you lost all of it, bro. Like, literally, like, I, you can't make this shit up. Like, greed. Clout, greed, all that shit. Cooked his shit, bruh really enough to establish him as a brand. Ugwe wasn't really doing anything unique. It was literally just recycled videos and old edgy jokes. So Ugwe decided to get into long form videos so that he could really be taken seriously as a creator. He started off by posting try not to laugh meme challenges where he would look at memes and well, try not to laugh. And he tried making the titles as clickbaity as possible to match his edgy style. And they did pretty well at first, but they slowly started to get less and less views, eventually not even scrapping 20 20k. He needed Ew. something different. Something that still wouldn't really require extreme effort, but could still get those views. Nothing was off the table. And he noticed that his friend, Man Like Isaac, was doing a particular style of videos that were doing very, very well. Walking into KFC until I see a black person. Walking into Starbucks until I see a middle-aged white woman. Running until I see something that starts with the letter N. You get the point. The title with the extremely short length of less than 20 seconds was already a joke on its own. But it did massive numbers. And Master Ugwe got another light bulb above his head. Soon he started posting videos with the most clickbaiting title you could possibly think of. My opinion on black people. My of opinion course. on the LGBTQ community. My opinion on Jews. Very clearly leaving you curious as to what he could possibly and, and, say. And, 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 and the nigga wasn't talking about it. The nigga was not saying shit, bro. That's the crazy part. Like, he would clickbait the fuck out of the shit for no reason. Like, after a while, niggas would be tired of getting fucking clickbaited impossible not to click on the video to see what it was. But each video would just him be silent talking over some music to troll the audience. But this still worked pretty well and got him millions of views each time. Ugwe's queer was really starting to take off and his face was all over YouTube shorts and on TikTok. So much so that he even landed his first professional influencer boxing match hosted by DAZN, a professional boxing network that works pretty frequently with KSI. Ugwe was hyping up this boxing event pretty hard but when the match actually started he didn't even last three whole minutes not even getting through Damn. the very first round Damn. it was topsy-turvy i mean it's, yeah oh i go right after wow. it how about master Ugu? 
Ugwe. Wasting no time. Interestingly enough, uh, Master Ugwe has got the tie trunks on. Oh! Damn. Oh, sends Ugwe down. Mm. A massive shot from the mm. big boy. Damn. Now, granted, Ugwe is not a boxer, and his opponent was much more experienced than uh. he was. And not to buy shame or anything, but Ugwe was clearly not physically ready for. Hey, man. I know I'm fat, but like, come on, man. Make it look like a soft serve ice cream cone, man. Like he was poured in them shorts. All right, come on, man. For a boxing match compared to his opponent. Regardless, he still got respect from the community for taking on such a challenge. Being involved in a professional boxing match is huge for any influencer and helped him be certified as official. The match itself has nearly 2 million views on YouTube and also helped with Ugwe's status. It still wasn't enough for Ugwe. Now, before getting into content creation, Ugwe was a musician. He released music under the Elias Baklava Boy. But seeing how his master Ugwe persona was gaining more and more attention online, he started to release music under the persona Young Ugwe and Master Ugwe to help promote it. The way he created songs was very, very strategic. They were made so that they could be used very easily for his meme format of videos. He would feature these songs in almost every single one of his memes to help promote the song. And the songs worked smart. really well with the videos, but they only did so much to actually promote the music. The music videos would get a couple hundred thousand views, and even on Spotify, he would also get a couple hundred thousand plays. And this is pretty good That's for a musician, smart, but though. not as good as you think. Considering he's getting billions of views across these platforms, and that's the most amount his music did, it shows that it's not really good enough to stand on its own. And if you heard the music yourself, you'd see why it's not very popular. But regardless though, this was still good for Uguay. Between the streams and all the views he was getting, he was making a very, very good income. But that would start to crashed down in late 2023. Ugwe revealed that his channel was demonetized from YouTube and could not earn any money from them. The oh, main reason being that, that they found that. his content to be unoriginal, which it was for the most part. He was literally just taking other people's videos and adding his chat face reaction to it. It's not exactly original. And it's obvious he wasn't even posting these himself. YouTube does not really permit people who do unoriginal content to join the partner program. Facts. And Ugwe did not take this very lightly. Soon after, Ugwe tried to make the claim that they demonetized him because he supported Palestine, mostly because- I remember that! He's like, oh, I made a video in support of Palestine and they demonetized me. Wow! Nigga tried to go to Palestine angle is crazy! I didn't even- bro, I didn't even know that's why they demonetized him because he wasn't- that's insane. A couple days before he got demonetized, he posted a video about his friend being stuck in Gaza. And while some people may have fallen for this, it's very unlikely that's actually true. Ugwe knows that what he did was unoriginal. The formula for reposting other people's videos while reacting to it can be a very successful formula that can get you good views. However, it's seen as pretty cheap because most of the time, people are not very original or unique about it unless what you add actually adds a lot to the video. Right. Because other than that, it's just pumping out brain rot non stop. When a channel usually gets demonetized, it's really only the one channel that gets affected, not the others, assuming those other channels have not broken any guidelines. So from what we're seeing, it doesn't seem like his other channels were demonetized, even though they were also doing the exact same thing. But I could be wrong. But Ugwe was so distraught over the demonetization that he posted an entire video claiming that he's going to quit altogether. But not even two days later, he posted another video where he claimed that he talked to YouTube representatives directly and he was now able to get monetized. Now you think that maybe he would reflect on the events what? and possibly- like, Exactly. Like, it, like I, we watched this shit happen in real time. The nigga got demonetized, said he was quitting, said he was gonna get, he was getting remonetized, and then got to doing the same clickbait bullshit and just like trying to tread the lines like you wasn't just crying about quitting because you lost your monetization. Like, you literally lost your monetization and was upset going to Twitter, taking it to Twitter, but still doing the same shit and actually doing the worst shit and expect, like, bro. Like, that's, got, that's gotta be the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Possibly even change the style of content so that he wouldn't get into situations like this again. Well, 
you'd be wrong. He kept with his usual style of clickbaiting videos to try and get people to watch his long form while still continuing with the exact same style of short form. Nothing has changed. And while his views were going up and his music was doing decently well, it still wasn't enough for Uguay. The thing about Uguay's style is that he has to constantly be relevant on shock value in order to be relevant. And when it comes to using that style, you yeah. usually have to get more and more controversial each time in order to retain your audience because usually what you initially did for shock value isn't really as shocking the fourth or fifth time. Exactly. And with that being said, Ugwe could not keep doing clickbait videos anymore to try and make people think that he said the n-word, and posted a video where he actually said the n-word. I'm gonna say it for the first time in my life properly. Now, obviously, I censored that part because I don't want to play it. Ugwe at this point was now jumping on thin ice, and the response to this was still pretty divided. People were shocked to see that it wasn't clickbait, and the rest of the people just didn't really find it funny. But regardless, like this, this video still did more views than his last one, and to. Oh, I'm gonna say the word. Like, that. That's content to you? That's content to you? Oh, I'm gonna say the N-word. That's content? Okay. Uguay, all views are good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. And so he addressed the dark humor jokes by suggesting maybe the audience was racist for assuming that he was talking about a specific group of people. Obviously, this didn't go very well. Trying to pull the, well, maybe you're the racist one for assuming I'm talking about a specific race is not a very good way to respond to harsh criticism. It comes off as a very terrible attempt to take responsibility because that's what it was. Exactly. But regardless, Uguay had to keep up the momentum to keep the views coming and it was time to step it up even further with the music so he dropped a song titled adolf hitler is my fella fella obviously is not the let's go Anyway, yeah, now nah, that was, I saw that. That's it, you know. I never hear nobody substitute nigga for fella until, you know, the song is still up. And that's exactly why he banned on YouTube, man real word here. The song alone ruined Uguay's reputation as it made him come off as a desperate clout chaser. And at this point, all of the other YouTubers were completely sick of his shit. And eventually, one by one, multiple creators started calling him out. As a creator whose audience primarily comes from YouTube shorts, this is giving our community a horrible representation. I mean, the fact that people are making TikToks making fun of YouTube shorts because of you and a couple other creators, we really nice. need to fix that. This right here is the deadliest symptom of YouTube Shorts Brain. You are so far beyond gone in the brain rot universe that you decide, you know what? Now's my time to start just being racist because extra views, extra money, and my ego is so big, I don't even care what offends people anymore. So it's not like this is some immature kid who actually finds this stuff funny. It's a grown- Grown ass man, thank you who genuinely just wants views and attention and he has no talent to actually make content so he's just making the most scumbaggy videos that appeal to people with less than 10 brain cells from making slightly edgy jokes to just straight up using the n-word in his songs and videos in only a matter of years and it only took that long for his fans to start catching on to just how horrible and repetitive his jokes are if you don't know who master ugwe is he's essentially a youtube shorts creator who just posts like oversaturated memes and uh recently however this dude's gone completely nuts he's gone batshit insane full too bad cosplay instead of posting brain rot slop he's just gone schizo many of the creators believe that uge was taking the whole racist standpoint way too far and now was giving all of the creators a bad look for it rather than maybe apologizing or admitting nigga, that he was in the nigga double down wrong or taking accountability uge went on a complete twitter spiral where he responded to almost every single hate reply and comment which just made him look more and more desperate he then started posting pictures of other creators who were also canceled for saying the n-word like pewdiepie idubs and keemstar claiming if they can be forgiven so can he and it got to the point where he started even posting more controversial people like logan paul and kim jong il also claiming that if they can be forgiven so can he and this made him seem even more desperate because he was basically claiming that if these people can do terrible things then so can i which still made him seem unremorseful right. he like even if like my thing is, oh, if they did terrible shit and they can be forget, why do you want to do terrible shit? Like, what the fuck do you gain from that? 
oh, they did terrible shit and they're fine. Why can't I do it? Why do you want to do Because you're a terrible person. Like, what? Right. What kind of dumbass logic is that? Even tried posting a picture with man like Isaac claiming that this was proof he wasn't racist. Basically using the, hey, I'm I have, not racist. I, my I have a black friend. Shut the fuck up, nigga. Friend is black card. But even man like Isaac himself could not defend what Ugwe did, posting a video saying that he did not approve of the song. I personally told him, bro, I don't think you should release it. But then again, you guys know how he is. He doesn't give a shit. And considering Isaac was also into pretty dark humor, that says a lot. Ugwe then tried to further defend himself that he was just simply an actor playing a role. Oh, like yeah, how shut up. I act in all my videos just like how Leonardo played a racist like shut up. Shut Leonardo up. DiCaprio played the racist slave owner in Django Unchained. He was simply playing a racist person. Nigga, that's telling a story of some shit. You know what I'm saying? It was a written story that he was hired to do. You just, you didn't have to do that to make content. Like, what are we talking about? Trying to compare yourself to a person who played a character made to represent history is just simply another poor attempt to try and defend yourself. Nigga can't take no, the bro, the accountability, this, the lack of is is insane let's wait let's see what's Ma what master ugwe is up to right now oh he's trying to build his following on twitter oh day one day three of donating one cent to palestine for every follower i gain oh so he's trying to he's trying to build up his his uh his uh <laughs> yeah yeah he's trying to build his twitter following and try to you know what i'm saying None yeah, of this was right. Building it up off of, oh, if you follow me, I'll donate one cent to Palestine. This, you, you, your support isn't even genuine. You say you had a friend that was stuck over there. Your support isn't even genuine. You're trying to get followers, nigga. Right. If you're going to donate, donate. Working, so Ugwe decided to release an apology through the form of a song. Sorry for saying the N word. This alone already is pretty bad. But the worst part about it is that after the two minutes of the half assed apology, he just straight up says the N word right at the end of the song, doubling down on everything. But in the midst of the controversy, he continued with his usual style. Considering he never learned from his mistakes before, he probably assumed that he was invincible. But he'd be completely wrong. Because a couple days later, all of his channels on YouTube would get completely banned multiple oh. channels with several million subscribers and billions of views each oh, gone, gone in an instance surprising not nope. really if anything it's a little shocking that he only got demonetized initially as a punishment and only had one video taken down but Uwe couldn't fathom the possibility of maybe the fact that he was in the wrong and took to twitter to blame the ban N nigga said wow the haters that spam reported me actually i'm permanently banned on youtube hope you guys reconsider this is definitely uh that this as I definitely changed my content for the better. Hey, you literally released a song doubling down on what the fuck you did on spam reporters. While he thought that maybe he could gain some type of sympathy this way, he got the exact opposite. The YouTube community was throwing like said, confetti wah, wah. and celebrating over huh? the fact that he was off the platform. I mean, Ugwe getting banned was basically the equivalent to YouTube Christmas. There was not a single person that was upset that he was gone. Well, maybe except a couple edgy 12 year olds, but everyone was pretty happy. And personally, I do see why he was banned. As a Fact. Jewish man myself, I genuinely don't think Ugwe is anti-Semitic and I don't really get the impression that he He's racist. I'll be the first to say that I say extremely fucked up stuff, like really, really fucked up stuff. But I say all of that stuff off camera because I say it in a place where I know it's not going to negatively affect people in any type of way. And I'm not an exception because your favorite creator does it, your idol does it, and even you do it as well. Hey man, right. Like, here's the thing, bro. You say shit, but it's, it's, if you're not offending anybody when you say a certain thing, then you know, but you, he purposely did it to get clicks and views and to get, uh, people that were offended to click and, and, and view the shit that, you know what I'm saying? Like doing the shit with that ill intent is exactly why you got banned, bro. As well, if cause like, listen, I'll be the first to say it here. You know what I'm saying? I'm black. I got black friends, but we be saying a hard R. We be trolling each other though, but I'm not gonna sit here and like say like that's like okay here here here's like boom 
Right. I'm not doing this shit for clout. I'm not doing it to, oh, I could get clicks and views off this. No. I just be trolling with my homies. We know the the racist background of it. You know what I'm saying? And niggas took the word back. If we want to say it as a troll, we take, you know, but there's a time and a place. And there's, but like, it's like, all right, boom. For, me, for instance, me saying uh, the, like the F slur, say I called somebody the F slur, right? And I know they're not the F slur because they're straight. And I'm actually the F slur. That doesn't hurt them in any way. And I'm not doing it on the internet for people to get offended. No. I mean, you can just be trolling, bro. You feel me? So, like, it's like you, you're doing this shit for clout. You're trying to be clickbaity, and you have nothing to offer offer besides being clickbaity and a, a spam poster, bro. You know? Best man calls me all the time, but I know he's fruity, so it's okay. <laughs> so, like, see, like, bro, I'm saying it to niggas who won't get offended by it because it's not... I'm not saying it to be offensive. So like, you just got to understand you like niggas don't know how to read. You know what? You know what? A lot of people lack chat. Look at me. You know what? A lot of people lack social cues. They don't understand when is the right time to do something and the wrong time to do something. Niggas lack social cues at common sense and they cannot read the fucking room. Oh my God. It's like, you're not going to go, I'm not going to go to, to a place where, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, uh, niggas is, they're recovering drug addicts and called it, you know what I'm saying? I'll say, oh, that nigga look like a crackhead to like a random person or you dress like a crackhead, but I'm not going to go to an AA meeting and be like, y'all a bunch of crackhead. Like read the room, understand where jokes can be said and where they can't, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's like shit like that. People lack that common sense, bro. Common sense is not common. It's not. It's not common. If everyone said every single thing that they said, then everybody would get canceled. The difference here is that Ugwe is simply saying whatever he feels is going to get him as much views as possible without really understanding the consequences of his actions. Exactly. However, that still does not make it okay. Saying these type of things on a big platform can have a very negative effect on people and does come at the cost of certain groups. Yep. Considering his fans are young, impressionable children, this is not very good. Having a big platform means having a response responsibility and Ugwe took advantage of that. YouTube guidelines do get a lot of criticism for their strict policies, but something you don't see very often is people getting unrightfully banned. YouTube will very rarely ever actually remove someone completely from their website, allowing them to make a new account. So if someone does get banned, most of the time, it's probably justified. And from what I've personally seen, banning Ugwe was a reasonable decision on their part. This isn't some edgy high school kid who's making these edgy jokes for some attention. Right, it's, and it's not like you're a child trying to just grow an account and, and, and be famous you're a grown ass man you're 25 you're a grown ass man 25 about to be 26 grown man you knew you knew right from wrong you're not you're not a child you're not a child people and trying to blame it on spam hit man who's trying to dance character and his intentions and oh, like these edgy jokes for some attention it's a grown man who's trying to make money off of the expense of other people and trying to blame it on spam haters rather than maybe reflecting on your actions and taking accountability tells you all you need to know about this man's character and his intentions if there's anything that should be learned here it's that using controversy to get views and likes is not a price worth paying because whether it's in a month a year or a decade from now ooh, we will look back at this and regret, regret what he's done. Yeah, uh, shout out to uh this creator here. Uh, it's Blanco. This is a great video, nicely put together, well put together vid. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you for the info.